Okay, shalom. Right, very interesting lesson. Very close to my heart as well. Very motivated to re re do this lesson simply because I have a very, very, very good friend, a couple of very good friends that have fallen prey to these this latest wave of deviant teachings. Um, so it's all the Enoch solar calendars and all that accompanies that. Um, de those deviant teachings and in this lesson I'm going to show very clearly why the Enoch metatronic solar calendars are not Torah based okay so this will go on for more than one lesson um, let's just start looking at some lesson objectives because they are they are extensive so the lesson objectives to clearly demonstrate that the Enoch calendars are not Torah based concepts in any way at all they are not messianic they are metatronic and they were not followed at all by the early believers in Yeshua. You know, this is, you've got to get things straight. Um, we're going to, we're, we're, how are we going to present those objectives? One, who were the Essenes at Qumran and what can we learn about them from their community rules and Shabbat rules? Okay, so people who want to, who think and believe that the Essenes were the early believers in Christianity, they need to wake up. Um, anyway, we will go through these. It's all very interesting. It reveals a lot. It reveals a lot when you look into these things. Who were the Zadokites and what are the potential problems from following their teachings? Who is Enoch and why should we be worried to follow Enoch metatonic doctrines and calendars? Okay, how can the concept and analysis of the phrase Master of the Shabbat, Lord of the Shabbat, help us overcome these false legalistic doctrines and calendars? How is the concept of Mashiach and Melchizedek related to the concept of the Master of the Shabbat? Okay, that's going to come about through numerical analysis and also um, textual analysis uh, surrounding that, those subjects. What is the Torah perspective on the various periods of time and the way time is measured? Okay, i.e. sun and moon, months and years, and things like that. What in and what is what are the underlying Torah principles that these um, various periods of time, the way that they're measured, reveal about? Um, unity rather than separation very important to understand and how they link into the name yod heh -Vav and reveal the name yod heh -Vav and not conceal him why does the Torah base Shabbat include both night and day and what can this unity tell us about the plan yod heh -Vav has for Shalom and unity for all creation so obviously we're not going to get through all that in one listen because it's massive even this alone what is the Torah perspective and the various periods of time the way they are measured? It's a massive, 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 massive analysis. Um, you know, I'm just going to have to be quite selective on it. But let's go and have a look at some of the things that I've mentioned. We're just going to work through and, and see how much of this we can get through. Okay, certainly some of the first lesson objectives. Let's go and have a look at who actually the Essenes are. Because these people that are um, grabbing a hold of these what's newly discovered to them, doctrines, um, need to have some background information into what who the actual Essenes were because they're not very clear cut. There were more than one type of Essene, there were more than one type of groups, they were do not just living in Qumran. Um, and as well as we've also got to understand there's contradictions in the historical recording of these people there's a lot of ambiguity around that anyway the three major people that um uh, you know historically documented this Jew these jewish sects that would be called essenes um, and there's a lot of ambiguity surrounding them, but let's go and have a look at some of the basic principles that we do know. The Essenes that see, exceeded 4,000 members, members didn't just live at Qumran. So they lived in other Judean cities as well. They had like holding houses and things like that. Okay, extreme strictness for the law and especially Shabbat observance. We will come to those and um, their own Shabbat observance, what's called the scrolls that were f found regarding the Shabbat observance. Initiation, initiation into this sect, into this cult, consisted of one year probation followed by two years training leading to full table fellowship on swearing an oath of loyalty to the sect. So already there's a lot to be worried about there. There's a lot to be worried about this whole oath 
taking and and swearing in loyalty to the sect. These are cults. This this is cults. This this is, this is a form of control and initiation and things like this. This is not Christian. This is not early church believers. Um, you know, they did not need to be initiated in this way. way. And what we're talking about leading to full tel table fellowship, that means your entitlement to food provided by the community. Okay. So that's what table fellowship means there. They took all your possessions, by the way, and they would allow you to have certain amounts of food based on your behaviour. Only Adam, adult men allowed, according to Philo and Pliny, yours for state, some boys were initiated into the sect. Okay, so this male only. Okay, all I do believe all the um all the graves at Qumran were all men. Um I can remember reading that at some point. I think there were women um there were women part of the sect, but sometimes married men were initiated into it. Okay, serious disobedience resulted in expulsion from the order and their rules were very, very, very extensive. Okay. Common ownership of property. So you went into that sect and you abandoned your rights to your own property and handed it all over to the sect. Okay, so it, it, communism. That's the word used in the book, The Complete Dead Sea Scrolls in English, Penguin Classics, translated by... Geza Vermes, I think that's how you say it, his name, but I'm not too sure. It could be Geza Vermes. Right, so common ownership of property, communism. Communism or socialism is what we would call it today. New members handed over all property to the leaders and also superiors collected all wages earned by every sector. So every initiate into the sect. Okay, everything that they earned wage-wise went into the communal part. And the leaders took control of it. Agriculture was the main Essene occupation. Having renounced all private possessions, the members received all they needed. Food, clothes and care. Members could be harshly punished, however, according to community rules and food withheld and rationed for a year. Sometimes they weren't allowed at this... Which, if you read some of the um, rules, they had this, like... Um, what what they consider their t communal table or whatever, and um, and if you didn't behave, you certainly weren't allowed to be partake of that table. You was excluded. They had also things like wearing white garments, ritual bathing before meals, cooked and blessed by priests, rejection of animal sacrifices, and oaths to support their statements, and also rejection of marriages. So that if they had a, you know, like what Yeshua said, yes, let your yes be a yes and your no be a no, you couldn't make an oath to say, I swear by holy names that what I'm saying is true. And also rejection of marriage. Josephus says marriage was permitted in some Essene sects, but solely for procreation. So there was a massive, massive aspect of it was celibacy. No marital relations, even between man and wife, especially if not able to produce children. Did not believe in bodily resurrection. So they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. That's basically what they did not believe in. Seven years imprisonment for transgression of the Shabbat or festivals. And I'm going to go through some of the harsh rules regarding festivals. It's all biblical based, but they did take it to an absolute, absolute extreme. So this should alarm people. Okay, you wanting to follow these rules, this kind of mentality. By the way, this goes from my point of view when I'm reading this. Now, my t my, I am not, I do not in any way ever put the New Testament on the same level as the written Torah, the Chumash, the five books of Moses. Not, not even close. Um, I've made this quite obvious in all my teachings. I don't beat about the bush. I do not regard the New Testament as um, pure and holy holy to the certain there are aspects of it which are um the truth why are the truth because they absolutely perfectly align with what is written in the written torah and the torah is the truth okay but there's a lot that deviates from what is written in the torah and you can assume it may have been added on it, it can't possibly have been a deviation to what was in the written torah um, and when you're looking at some of these, you can start to think in your mind, OK, so lots of doctrine crept into the New Testament that wasn't really 
um, Torah base. Some corruptions, heavy corruptions went into the New Testament. Things like, um, you know, even things, that, you know, simple basic errors like Stephen saying that Abraham was buried in Shechem. When he clearly states in Torah where he's buried, he's buried in the cave of Machpelah. And this is in, well, it's near a place called Kiryat Arba. That's where you have to go. And it's near Hebron. Okay, so that's where the cave of Machpelah is, which is um, much further south than Shechem. Shechem's right up in in the north of Israel. So you've got to understand there's a lot of problems. There's things quoted from Scripture that isn't actually in Scripture and things like that. So there are errors contained within the New Testament. You've got to be very clear. All my understanding and all my teaching are based purely on um, what is written in the Torah and backed up and revealed in the Torah, the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and the concept of Yeshua as revealed in the Torah, which is pure and holy. So I don't go and I'm not biased by what is written in the New Testament unless it aligns with what's in the Torah. And obviously some of these things are written into the New Testament. You've got to question them. Why? Because they're certainly not Torah-based. Celibacy and things like that are certainly not Torah-based. Okay, so you can understand, did this have an influence on New Testament teachings and was that influence holy and good? My answer to that is absolutely not. From a Torah perspective, absolutely not. So, Qumran's Greatest Novelty. This is written in the book, the Penguin Classic book, the entire Complete Dead Scrolls in English. Okay, so this is the kind of people that we are dealing with at Qumran. Qumran's Greatest Novelty. If one had to single out the most revolutionary novelty furnished by Qumran, its contribution of the genie, Genesis of Jewish literary compositions would justifiably be our primary choice. Comparative study of biblical manuscripts where no two copies display the same text and, a, and of sectarian works attested in a number of sometimes startlingly different redactions has revealed in one leading scholar's words insufficiently controlled copying. In my view, however, the phenomenon would be better described as scribal creative freedom. Qumran manuscript scripts of scripture and even more of the community rule in the war community rule and the war scroll indicate that diversity, not uniformity, reigned there and then, and that redactor copyists felt free to improve the composition which we which they were rep reproducing, even the scriptures themselves. So they, and this is the top scholars that have been able to analyse all of the scripts, not one was the same. So if you was copying it, you copied it according to what you thought it should have said, even including scripture law. Qumran manuscripts of scripture, uh, insufficiently controlled copying where no two copies display the same te text and of sectarian works attested in a number of sometimes startlingly different redactions they didn't they, this is this is not 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 people that were um you know honoring at what had gone before these are people who were changing it according to the wind you know, the, the, there was one thing written here, one thing written there, and it's exactly the same manuscripts. And depending on which scribe was copying and redacting it, it was it was like their creative freedom of expression to put basically what they felt should be written there. So, Qumran's greatest novelty. You've got to understand that this is what you're dealing with when you, de when you are changing the entire calendar on which you base your worship to the to Yod Hu Vavhe, who changes not, who changes not, you are basing it on some scrolls that are highly, highly insufficiently controlled copies and in other words they they got to write whatever they wanted and it did they, they didn't even they didn't even abide by what they were copying they had absolutely no regard for that they wrote what they felt they should be writing and that was is like it says here um where no two copies display the same text okay so you have got to be highly highly 
highly concerned when you are depending on these scrolls um, and what went on at Qumran for your worshipping service to your Tev Afe. Okay, highly concerned. Right, not only should you be concerned from that point of view, lots of people mention this term Zadokites, you know, these were the true priests if you like the zadokites who were the zadokites they were the sadducees that you were warned about in the new testament okay so when um it's um you got you got to understand the name zadokites which is what they're called um and people have this r romantic vision of these zadokites the zadokites the true priests the zadokites were the sadducees from the new testament Okay, so let's go and have a look what the New Testament has to say about these Sadducees, Sadducees. But when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come into his place of baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. That's Matthew 3, 7. Just to show that the Sadducees were the Zadokim, the Zadokites, mentioned in the new testament you've got this encyclopedia britannica quote britannia quote sadducees it could be britannica actually encyclopedia britannica i might have copied it wrong sadducee hebrew zedok plural zedekim member of a jewish set that flourished for about two centuries before the destruction of the second temple of jerusalem in 70 ce not much is known of the sadducees origin and early history but their name may be derived from that of zedok who was a high priest in in the time of King David and Solomon, Ezekiel later selected this family as worthy of being entrusted with control of the temple, and Zadokites formed the temple hierarchy down to the second century BCE. Okay, but by the time Yeshua came on the scene, they was corrupted. They was corrupted, and he made sure he communicated to his followers to um, be very aware of these. Be very aware. Um, this is another one from this the, you could quote a lot but i can't i can't, I can't ov obviously quote everything written about sadducees within the new testament the same day came to him the sadducees which say that there is no resurrection and asked him so these were people who did not believe in the resurrection of the dead okay they didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead and yeshua himself called himself the resurrection okay just to make you understand who this concept of those who don't believe in the resurrection it's written in the talmud and shmuel says these dead that ezekiel revived were people who denied the resurrection of the dead as it is stated so this is a quote from ezekiel then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel behold they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off that's Ezekiel 37, 11. God tells Ezekiel that these were people who had lost hope for resurrection. And that's taken from Sanhedrin 92b. Okay, I've done an old analysis on this um, dry bones. It's unbelievably wonderful, wonderful. I can't go into it today, but the whole verse is an, an alphanumerical analysis of the one, um, uh, you know, when it asks the question, can these bones live? You know, it's absolutely incredible. It's all wonderful revelation about Mashiach ben Yosef. The truth is revealed in the Torah regarding the concept of Mashiach and regarding the concept of the resurrection of the dead. Okay. So Sadducees, as you can see in the Talmud, are related to these people who don't, the, the valley of the dry bones. There's another way of looking at it. Um, there, are, there are other... Um, connections to these Valley of the Dry Bones. The Talmud mentions different um, people that these bones represent. Another is the tribe of Ephraim, and um, it's very interesting. It's the tribe of Ephraim who prematurely left Egypt, be believing that the time of the redemption had come, and they prematurely left, and then they went into the land of the Philistines and they got absolutely slaughtered. I think they went, it's, it mentions in Chronicles that they went looking for cattle to get the cattle back and they got absolutely slaughtered. And it mentions that the father mourned for um, the this, these dead sons. Okay. And that that is why the um, children of Israel was led um, around you know, they weren't allowed to go up into Israel through the land of the Philistines, Plishtim, they had to go via the Red Sea 
and it was account on account of all the this valley of the dry bones where those from the tribe of Ephraim would um, those bones that were from the tribe of Ephraim would frighten the those leaving when they saw that all these people who thought redemption had come early but got it wrong from the tribe of Ephraim and ended up perishing. Palestine slaughtered them. The fal- Palest- um, Philistines slaughtered them and, and God didn't want him to see that so he um, took them via a different route okay so there are different opinions it's all coded messages things into it so we can see how you know through the Talmud there's a link between the Sadducees and the Ephraimites you know there is this link through the valley of the dry bone the valley of the dry bones you know so we've got to make sometimes we've got to make those connections because who is it now that's following the sadducees in their doctrine their zadokai enoch calendars and all this it's probably i would say primarily those torah keeping lost of the house of israel you know and you know the adamant that this divine calendar which is represents like um perfection that we haven't yet reached we haven't yet reached the time of full redemption you know and we want to make sure that we're not running off early into the desert you know declaring our liberty um, before the time has actually occurred there's no doubt in my mind there is no doubt when messiah comes again that he will restore a calendar that's different to the one that we've got now um, there's no there's no doubt about that at all in my mind there are things that i would af- absolutely acknowledge don't add up to me regarding the current calendar that uh, that has been in place the hebraic calendar that has been in place there's things that don't add up but as far as the reality of the exile in which we are living now and um, all that we are subject to during that exile until we have completed everything that we have got to complete down on earth, the 999 footsteps of Mashiach ben Yosef, then we have got to understand that until that time comes um, when when things change in a big way you know there will be a perfect year and a perfect month we haven't got that now we've got um we've got this we've got a system which is very difficult to absolutely divide up the months and years um exactly and precisely you know but we hope when by the time the mashiach comes things will be changed anyway i can't go into too many details but when i come to doing the whole concept of the calendar within the torah that it is a solar lunar calendar and 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 why it has to be that and because of the for the sake of the unity of the name yod heh vav and this this the entire of the Torah is based on this kind of unity between the sun and the moon, you know, and all that that represents, you know, physicality and spirituality you united, heaven and earth united, Israel and the nations united, Esav and Yaakov united, all the wonderful things that I endlessly talk about, the shalom between the male aspect of divinity and the female aspect of divinity, and all the... Uh, wonderful things that yod heh vav is trying to establish. He is not trying to um, separate night and day and he is not trying to separate the sun and the moon. Um, he is trying to bring unity and the Mashiach is all about unity, not separation. So we've got to be very careful. We've got to look at all these things as codes and, wh- and what ap- is happening in the world now that might align to some of these little coded hints that we've been given in the actual Torah and the and the and the Tanakh that can that can guide us through these last days before Mashiach is fully revealed. It's very difficult ground to negotiate, by the way. Um, it's not easy, and I'm I'm not surprised how people have been lured um, down the wrong paths. This is something else. This is what Yeshua himself said. If you believe that this is what Yeshua himself said, then Yeshua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaving of the Pharisee and of the Sadducees. That's from Matthew 16 6. Leaving and yeast is symbolic with pride and arrogance. That is something we need to totally avoid because to be a Hebrew, 
to have a Hebraic mindset, which is absolutely necessary in order to reach final redemption. We've got to be like Hebrews, and Hebrews is synonymous with the truth, and Hebrews is synonymous with humility. Okay, we cannot, we cannot have pride and arrogance, thinking that we are somehow better than others because we are able to keep more laws and more rules and all that lot. Because I'm going to show you a video of all the rules and laws that I kept when I was going to, to convert to Orthodox Judaism for seven years. And, um, you know, this is no system that you want to be caught up in. So I know what I'm speaking of. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Oh, the master of the Shabbat. Before I get to this, however, we need to make a distinction. So let's just go back and bring that, what we've just been looking at. We need to make a massive distinction here between messianic consciousness and metatronic consciousness. Okay. I did a teaching and I'm going to bring it up. Let's have a look. Um, I'll end this. I did a teaching and this was it. It's all about Metatron, Moshe and Mashiach giving sight to the blind. Okay, it's very important teaching this. This is really to understand the difference between Metatron, who is Enoch. Enoch got transformed. He was no more and he got transformed into Metatron. Metatron is an entire system that's in place whilst Adam is fallen from his status in Ganadam. Basically that's the way to sum it up. Instead of Metatron being there, there should be Moshiach there. But until Moshiach is fully resurrected from the dead and is fully resurrected from the exile into which he has exiled himself in order to suffer with us until we correct our faith in the name yod heh vav -Hey. Okay. Instead of Mashiach ben Yosef being fully revealed, he is in a state like Yosef was in Egypt, fully concealed from his brothers and his fathers. And as he's in that state of concealment and hiddenness, Metatron is the system in charge. Now, Metatron, if you go and listen to this, it's a three-hour teaching, it will be absolutely fill you up with what you need to know about Metatron and Enoch, the way that that is, is a um, slave mentality, basically. Metatron is referred to in Proverbs as the slave who becomes a king. Okay? Um, is so is he acts like a slave and he gets you thinking like a slave and through this metatronic consciousness yod he -Vav is constantly changing you know if i only do this good yod he -Vav will be good to me and if i don't do all these holy rules and keep all these holy laws there will be punishment and consequences for me and this is a metatronic system this is metatronic. This is what e this is Enoch. This is the calendar that you're fo following. The book of Enoch is is metatronic. So he's always changing. He is is like the um, uh, the rod of Elohim. Okay, that cha that was in Moshe's hand and changed into a serpent, and then back into a rod. So it just depends. Um, which way the wind blows, or whether you do, if you if you are a good slave to this slave who's pretending to be a king, whilst the real king's in hiding, doing the real work of your Vave, you know, all the people are kept busy appeasing this slave king with more and more slavery. You know, I go through it much better in the teaching. I'm certainly not going through it now, but. I want to just show you a video of what I subjected myself to. This whole, this metatronic system, you know, where you've got to earn your reward and earn your nearness to yod heh -Vav -Hey, And somehow if you don't, you're going to be punished. This is yod heh -Vav -Hey, constantly changing, depending on your behaviour. This is not the truth. yod heh -Vav -Hey changes not. Yeshua came and taught us that. We have access to that unchanging na name, um, through Mashiach ben Yosef, provision was made for us to gain access to the unchanging reality of the name yod heh -Vav -Hey. His love is constant. His kindness is constant. His, his forgiveness is constant. His grace is constant. His truth is constant. He changes not. He is always good. Okay, but until 
Mashiach ben Yosef is fully revealed, Od Yosef Chai, and, and, and Mashiach is the channel between heaven and earth, and the channel that we've got instead is Metatron, and really we should have this open, full channel that we can receive all the light possible. The channel that we should be able to receive through is the concept of the full concept of Mashiach. Okay, that's the channel that we receive. That's what's called Yesod. That's what's called Yosef. That's the channel between heaven and earth. Okay, so the, the, the light that is in from the name yod heh vav is able to reach us and manifest down in our lives here on, here on earth. Okay, so the channel should be Mashiach ben Yosef, or Mashiach, the united concept of Mashiach. And until Mashiach is fully resurrected from the dead, and until everything that the Mashiach has got to do at this time in exile with us and suffer with us in exile, whilst it's accomplishing all it's got to accomplish, Metatron's there instead. And Metatron's the trick cut from the concept of the tree of the good and the knowledge of good and evil. So if you do this that's good, then you'll be rewarded. And if you do this, then you'll be punished. And the flow from heaven to earth is very, very, very much restricted. It isn't the abundance that we should have through the channel that is Mashiach ben Yosef or the, the united concept of Mashiach. So I want you to show to show you my experience of metatronic consciousness rather than messianic consciousness. We have to attain messianic consciousness. We have to know who we are before Yod Hev Ave. We are sons and daughters of the living God. We are um, children of the king daughters of the king and sons of the king we are not slaves to a slave pretending to be the king okay the slave who was pretended to be the king and the handmaid who has um, pretending to be the queen we are not their slaves we are children of the the, the living God Chil sons and daughters of the living God and we've got to have that consciousness Enoch is the opposite of that. He's going to let you know that consciousness that comes from Metatron and Enoch is the opposite of that. God always changes and depending on how well you behave, you know. So let's go and have a look at this. I've just got to make some slight changes first. Laws of Yom Tov, which is slightly different from Shabbos. Bas Yisrael Halachas, so they're the laws pertaining specifically to a woman. Kitsu Shulchan Ha'rok, so it's a shortened version of all the Halachas for today. It's a big, a big, big series there. So anything you want to know about praying or anything at all, it's all in there. Laws of Bracha, which Bracha, which blessings to say for which particular meal, um, food, before and after, and the different quantities, etc., Laws of modesty down there, so how you're supposed to dress and act as a woman. The laws of Nida, you know, they're just two books there, look. And all the, um, <laughs> they, that's just the monthly separation. All the laws that you need to observe regarding separation between a husband and a wife during a monthly cycle. Illustrated Guide to Shabbat, so... All the 39 malachas of Shabbat, the 39 law, laws that you've not to break and examples of that. Okay. Um, this is Kashruth. So Kashruth is keeping ca cash kosher kitchens and stuff. So that's all the laws to do with milk and dairy separation. Kasher in your kitchen. Everything like that. Um, what you can eat with what. This is a course that I went on, a Shabbat course in the kitchen. You got to know what you got to know exactly how to apply all these laws, you know, in practical ways. So you know, like for example, Ashkenazi Jews are not allowed to take the lid off certain drinks because it's classed as a final hammer blow. Um, maka, I can't remember what they call it now. I think it's right at the beginning actually. Oh yeah, Maka Bepatish final hammer blow and also writing erasing writing so these are the notes that i took when i went on a course run by a very orthodox lady in the jewish community she taught me all the 39 malachas for everything you know, if you're putting a piece of lettuce on your plate etc and you know cut, cutting cress putting lemon on putting mayonnaise all kinds of things there's, there's all kinds of laws up to 39 laws you could potentially break just by preparing food on shabbat cooking food on shabbat you're not allowed to cook any food on Shabbat. You just have to, be, you know, be careful about your preparing. Uh, so it goes on and on. And then this is the th books of the 39 Malachas of Shabbat. 
So the 39 malochas, you've got to, that, that's it. That, that's a, an essential read if you want to know how to keep Shabbat according to Halakha. Um, these are just two books that my friend studied when he was here. Uh, was st staying at my house, not this particular house in Scotland, but one down in Manchester when I was in the community. He taught me a lot of the laws. Then we've got things like this. Badaika Samazon. So this is all about looking for bugs in the food. You know, and this goes through all illustrated the different types of bugs in food. If you don't check for bugs, by the way, you're eating them. Um, what kinds of infestations are most likely in which particular foods and how to check each type of food. It's called Badaika Samazon. Um, what else have we got? Cash root questions and answers. So, you know, waiting time for children. How long must children wait between eating a meal and dairy? And all kinds of questions. It's all on basically meat and dairy. And if you use a milky spoon and you put it into a meat pot and all kinds of different scenarios, uh, what you have to do. So you separate everything. Halachos for Pesach. So when you get your house ready for Pesach, You've got to first read that and then know exactly what to do to all your utensils and stuff to get them ready for Pesach because you can't eat anything that has got chametz on it or that's been used for chametz unless it's been cashed. These are your daily prayers. So what you've got to do each day, this is um, this is this is basically your three sets of prayers for each day. Every day, get, get through that. And then this is for Shabbat, which is substantially shilly more, because you've got Musaf prayers and Kablash Shabbat and all kinds of things in there. So that's what you're looking at. That's the that's the, that's the system. And this is where I'm when, when I've said before, this is like um, and I've kept all these and I, and I value all these lot. Like I, I honestly felt like I was more holy at the time for keeping all this. I've slight I've changed my opinion now because I realised I was just a slave working for a slave master. I wasn't serving your Tevafe. I wasn't serving your Tevafe. I was serving a slave master instead. And uh, this is the metatronic mindset that we get caught up in instead of a messianic mindset. So um, I just wanted to highlight that and hopefully build that into um, the arguments that I've been arguing regarding this whole metatronic system that we can be caught up in. I have been caught up in that system. I've got all the books. Um, you know, I've been on the courses myself and I lived the life. So I do have some measure of understanding as to this system because I was very much a part of it. Okay. Okay, so now hopefully I'm going to have a look at the next stage of it, this whole concept of the Master of the Shabbat, to show how from a messianic point of view um, and having this view that Yeshua had, um, just even having a look at this this um, context, th this concept of the master of the Shabbat can help liberate us from that metatronic mindset. Anybody who's listened to my teachings on Metatron will understand more what I'm saying. Um, Metatron is, is he acts instead of Yotev Avi. Most people are having a relationship with Metatron. Um, it's called, in even in the Enoch books, the lesser Yotev Avi. Okay, so he presents himself when we have not attained the level in our soul that um, elevates us up to the status of children of the king. Okay, until we work and elevate ourselves up through the channels that Yodhev Avi himself has provided, through the concept of the Mashiach, the true Mashiach has revealed in the Torah of Yotevave, the Mashiach of Yotevave, not our fantasy fiction versions that we get from the lies we've inherited in the religions into which we've been born, the religions of Christianity, although there's a lot of lies regarding Yeshua, the religion of Judaism, there's a lot of rega lies regarding, there's a lot of truth. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of truth, there's a lot of lies. And we've got to, and, and even in Islam, there's a lot of truth, there's a lot of lies. We've got to elevate ourselves up and we've got to overcome the metatronic um, system, if you like. When, and it's the power of truth that that elevates us. Truth about what? Truth about Odio Sifchai. 
Yosef is still alive. You know, this is the truth. And I go on about it always in all my teachings. That's the ultimate truth. We've got to have the truth regarding what Yod Hevave has done through the concept of Mashiach to bring us into them elevated levels. And somehow, whilst we are elevating our souls up to the very heights where we attain those levels where we know we are in the palace of the king, face to face with the name yod Vavi as his sons and beloved daughters, uh, beloved sons and beloved daughters, and, and that provision of access has been made for us through the suffering of the Mashiach, Okay, and he's, we've been brought near on account of his death and his suffering. Um, and all the things that are involved in that are the unity of Moshe, Moshe suffering as well in exile. And and then the the unity of the concept of Mashiach ben David. All of it, is, is, it, all of it builds us that channel that needs to be opened up, um, that Metatron is there until we have figured it all out. Okay, so you got to know what the challenge is that's before us. And most people's relationship with God, what they perceive as God at this time, and when they say, I heard the voice of God, Metatron is the voice of God to most people. Okay, so all these things, when people are presenting their version of your Tevave to you, but one day, well, he's blessing us, and then the next day the heavens are as brass, and their understanding of your Tevave is constantly changing depending on the weather or depending on what they've done. The relationship that they are having is with Metatron, who is there until they get it figured out, the truth regarding Mashiach. Okay, when they, when we have gra- when we have sh- struggled with all the illusions with all the doubts with all the fears with all the lies we've inherited to reveal the truth the truth about what the truth about the Mashiach is revealed in the mind of God not in our fantasy fiction exiled mindsets but through a Hebraic mindset we will get the truth and then we will be able to discern the difference between Metatron and a messianic consciousness and come face to face with the name yod heh Ave. So before I get there, I mentioned about what we can learn about the essence from the community rule. And I want you to know, when I read this out to you, this is not just about a calendar. This is about an entire metatronic mindset that you've got to not to, to be free of. If you want to ascend to the heights of heaven, if you want proper communion with our Father in heaven, Yote Vave, you're going to have to overcome these forces that stand in your way. And why I'm going to read the community rule is, and, and why I put all that that I subjected myself to, does that mean to say that all the go around desecrating the Shabbat? No. Okay. I used to keep all the rules. I still keep Shoma Shabbat for the most part. Um, I, I don't eat at milk and dairy I have just a dairy kitchen so that eliminates a lot of the cash root rules but I keep kosher and I keep things properly I don't do things by halves I do it properly if I'm going to do it I do it properly but what I'm saying is that that is not the focus of, and, and, and the meaning of my life I am definitely not serving Metatron and if I thought for a second that I were I wouldn't be doing it I am serving your Tevave and that access and right and honour to be able to serve him was pr- the provision that was made was Mashiach and specifically Mashiach ben Yosef, who is Yeshua. Okay, so let's read the community rules of the Essenes and see if any of this leaven, the this type of metatronic Enoch mentality, is infected. Yeah. Right, these are the rules by which they shall judge at a community court or inquiry according to the cases. If one of them has lied deliberately in matters of property, he shall be excluded from the pure meal of the congregation for one year and shall do penance with respect to one quarter of his food. So that means he's basically going without a quarter of his food because he lied regarding property. He might have like said that, oh, I've given you all my property, but withhold something, okay? Whoever has answered his companion with obstinacy or has addressed him impatiently, going, as, going so far as to take no account of the dignity of his fellow by disobeying the order of a brother inscribed before him, he has taken the law into his own hand, therefore he shall do penance for one year and shall be excluded. So he won't be able to eat at the table. 
If any man has uttered the most venerable name, even though frivolously or as a shock, or for any other reason whatsoever, so the holy name yod heh vav you're not allowed to pronounce it at all, while reading the book or blessing, he shall be dismissed and shall return to the council of the community no more, forever excluded, if he said the name. And a lot of these people that are keeping the Enoch calendar, they are sacred namers. They are sacred namers. If there was wanting to keep these rules, they wouldn't be allowed to. That would be that no more community if you were so uh, so adamant to pronounce the name yod heh vav -Heh. If he's, he has spoken in anger against one of the priests inscribed in the book, he shall do penance for a year and he shall be excluded for his soul's sake from the pure meal of the congregation. But if he has spoken unwittingly, he shall do penance for six months. Whoever has deliberately lied shall do penance for six months. Whoever has deliberately insulted his companion unjustly shall do penance for a year and shall be excluded. Whoever has deliberately deceived his companion by word or by deed shall do penance for six months. If he has failed to care for his companion, he shall do penance for three months. But if he has failed to care for the property of his community, thereby causing its loss, he shall restore it in full. And if he be unable to restore it, he shall do penance for sixty days. Whoever has borne malice against his companion unjustly shall do penance for six months from one year. And likewise, whoever takes revenge in any matter whatsoever whoever has spoken foolishly three months whoever has interrupted his companion while speaking ten days whoever has lain down to sleep during the assembly of the congregation thirty days and likewise who was left without reason in the assembly of the congregation as many as three times during one assembly shall do penance for ten days but if he has departed whilst they were standing he shall do penance for thirty days and it goes on and on and on and on and on your lives was completely enslaved to the community rule book. You know, you had absolutely no say, even to the degree of how much you were getting fed. Okay, and in the Shabbat rules, let's go and have a look. Because these you need to be aware of so that, um, you know, what you're dealing with. Okay, what are you dealing with? So loads of people concerning the Shabbat to observe it according to its law. No man shall work on the sixth day from the moment when the sun's orb is distant from its own fullness from the gate wherein it sinks. For this is what he said, observe the Shabbat day to keep it holy. No man shall speak or any vain or idle word on the Shabbat day. He shall make no loan to his companion. He shall make no distinction in matter of money and gain. Just to bear in mind that a lot of these people following the Enoch calendars only keep the Shabbat from the daylight hours. They believe that Shabbat comes from sunrise. Okay, so, this, so, so here quite clearly, for when the sun's orb is distanced by its own fullness from the gate, wherein it sinks. Okay, so when the sun goes down, keep Shabbat from then. You, are you, you with me with this? Because I have listened to my friends keep now the Shabbat from sunrise to sunset. Okay just the daylight hours they've separated the day from the night they've separated the female from the male they've separated heaven from earth okay the church from the from yeshua because we represent uh we represent the bride and we're in compared to him we are like the night this is why the virgins are waiting at night you know with the oil lamps uh, you know, we, we can't have that separate separation. But anyway, they've gone down and managed to separate. But it's even against this community that didn't do that. So no man shall speak any vain or idle work on the Shabbat day. He shall make no loan to his companions. He shall make no decision in matters of money and gain. He shall say nothing about work or labour to be done on the morrow. No man shall walk in the field to do business on the Shabbat. He shall not walk more than 100 cubits beyond his town. No man shall eat on the Shabbat day except that he, which he is already prepared. He shall eat nothing lying in the fields. He shall not drink except in the camp. If he is on a journey and goes down to bathe, he shall drink water where he stands, but he shall not draw water into the vessel he shall not send out no stranger on his business on the shabbat day no man shall wear soiled garments or garments brought to the store unless they have been washed with water or rubbed with incense no man shall willingly mingle with others on the shabbat no man shall mark what walk more than two thousand cubits after a beast to pasture it Outside his town, he shall not raise his hand to strike it with his fist. If it is stubborn, he shall not take it out of his house. No man shall take anything out of the house or bring anything in 
And if he's in a booth, let him neither take anything out nor bring anything in. He shall not open a sealed vessel on the Shabbat. No man shall carry perfumes on himself while going out and coming on the Shabbat. He shall lift neither stone nor dust in his dwelling. No man minding a child shall carry it whilst going out and coming on the Shabbat. No man shall chide his maidservant or manservant or labourer on the Shabbat. No man no man shall assist a beast to give birth on the Shabbat day. And it, if it should fall into a cistern or pit, he shall not lift it out on the Shabbat. No man shall spend the Shabbat in a place near to Gentiles on the Shabbat. No man shall profane the Shabbat for the sake of riches or gain on the Shabbat day. But should any man fall into water or fire, let him not be pulled out with the aid of a ladder or rope or some such utensil. So you know, just let the guy drown and burn. No man on the Shabbat shall make anything on the altar except the Shabbat burn offerings, for it is written, thus except your Shabbat offerings. And it goes on and on and on and on. Okay, so you've got to be aware what you're dealing with. Extreme cult metatronic mentality this is not the teachings of yeshua but somehow this leaven may well have got into the new testament teachings by design okay it is not torah as is written in the torah of moisha okay it's very legalistic it's very metatronic it's very much a slave getting you to do slave work Okay, with a slave mentality. This is not instruction from a father to his children in love for them to honour his name with love and joy. Okay, and that was what we gained through Yeshua. So I can't go through the entire of this concept of the Master of the Shabbat. This is another lesson now, but I just wanted to highlight you know this is the doctrine that you're attaching yourself to you want to live like you think that these Essenes were early christians and 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 that somehow by keeping this calendar you are doing this great and holy thing you are fooling yourself you are deceiving yourself a slave mind a slave mentality and it's very deviant teachings Let's go listen to something that may refresh us. The whole concept of the Master of the Shabbat and how this nullifies this kind of attitude is wonderful, by the way. Um, but like I said, I won't get through it all in this lesson. The Lord of the Shabbat. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Shabbat. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Shabbat. Jesus replied, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to eat, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Shabbat the priests in the temple break the Shabbat and yet are innocent? But I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If only you had known the meaning of I desire mercy, not sacrifices, you would not have condemned the innocent for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Shabbat. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to do some number crunching and we're going to see exactly, um, I want you to bear in mind the concept that, you know, for everything holy and truthful and right, there's always an unholy counterpart. I want you to be very clear from this that the unholy counterpart is Metatron Enoch compared to Mashiach ben Yosef and the whole messianic um, mindset that we've got to do. And the old messianic system that really should be firmly established, um, and we have got to we have got to attain those levels within our own soul. We've got to wake ourselves up to true reality. Let's go and have a look at some of the numbers that are going to help us do that. For the Son of Man, He is Master of the Shabbat. It's Adon HaShabbat, Master of the Shabbat. I e, you know. Um, uh, this is this is this is the real mentality that distinguishes between metatronic and messianic um, mentality. Okay, so as holy and as wonderful as the Shabbat is, once you reach this level, look like the Son of Man level, 
And Yeshua, by the way, was far, far higher than this level. He's just saying that th this is something that's like, accessible to us all, the level of the Son of Man. It's an appellation for a spiritual soul level, but we all have the ability to attain the level of the Son of Man. Uh, we can all even, in fact, fact attain the soul level of the son of god you know through yeshua all these things are possible so he's talking even about a basic level much much lower than his actual level his spiritual soul level he was the highest possible incarnation of the soul of mashiach okay the highest 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 possible revelation the greatest revelation of the name yod have -Hav it possible for us to be understood for from the perspective of a created finite being Okay, so he was a, re a revealer of the name yod heh vav to the highest, most merciful levels possible. So this, he, this, the fact that he ca calls it for the Son of Man is Lord of the Shabbat, he's not just talking about his own level, he's, he's letting us know that this is something that we can access. The Son of Man is a level of soul we can access. Okay, when we liberate ourselves from Metatronic Enoch, um, ways of thinking and the Enoch system and the Metatronic system. Okay, so for the Son of Man, he is the master of the Shabbat. What does he mean by that? We can go and have a look at some of the numbers, but let's just get this. Let let me just try and get this concept. Um, I was meditating on it today. Actually, it's it's not an easy one to grasp, but um, you know we are not there to serve as slaves to this concept of Shabbat. We are not the slaves of the Shabbat. You saw all those books that I've just showed you in the video. We're not we're not a slave of a slave. You know, this is the wrong mentality. We are children of the king. So we are not slaves to the Shabbat. The Shabbat is there for our benefit, not for us to permanently work to please the forces that make the Shabbat holy or not. And if we just do all these things, these million billion different rules and regulations, somehow we will create a Shabbat. This is absolutely ridiculous. This is metatronic. This is total slave mentality. And believing that if only you keep all these rules, you're going to get access to the holy name yod heh vav -Eh. It's a complete crock of nonsense. You've got to see it for what it is. The master of the Shabbat. The Shabbat is there for us to rest and bask in the presence of our Father in heaven. It's not for us to slave away all day long trying to appease um, the ship, you know, trying to, to, to trying to, uh, you know, sanctify it endlessly, uh, you know, uh, according to all these millions and billions of rules, and we've got to indoctrinate our kids with and stuff. I showed you the books. It's a different mentality. It's a different system. This is metatronic. This is when the person that you are serving, thinking you're serving the king, is really the slave in disguise. Metatron comes as the disguise of the king. That's what the Zohar tells you regarding him. He is. Um, he fulfills the verse in Proverbs, which states, uh, you know, a slave instead of the king, and the handmaid instead of the queen. You know, and um, a foolish satiated. That's talking about the error of Rav, the exilic mindset. We have got to, to, to imitate Yeshua. He was the Lord of the Shabbat. Okay, he was the Lord of the Shabbat. He was the master of the Shabbat. He was not slaving away in order to establish the Shabbat. The Shabbat there was there for his, his benefit. The Shabbat there was because he was master of the Shabbat. So he's talking about soul levels, liberated soul levels, when you know that that day is a gift from your Holy Father for his holy children to enjoy being in his presence, not to think like slaves and act like slaves for a slave taskmaster. Okay, and we can go and have a look at the numbers. For the Son of Man, and I want to get that clear. I want to get people who are relying on the book of Enoch, who is Metatron, and even within that book, he tells you he's Metatron. This is a vast concept. The, the Metatron is the prince of the world. He's the ruling power of this world. We've got to defeat him. Yeshua wasn't subject to him. Okay. 
And there's two sides to him. There's that, that like the angel of the Lord side. And then there's Hasatan, the Satan. You know, this is why your Chitvafe changes according to this slave master. These because he's either he's he's either uh, you know blessing you or whipping you. It's one or the other. But, but our relationship is to be above that. It's to, it's to be above that. Where we're just we are just aware that we're children of the King. We're children of the King, totally enough to be loved. I can't stop loving us, and our service to Him is based on love and joy because He is such a worthy King to serve. Because He changes, He's not, and He's always good. We've got to attain those levels of soul. This was what was made available through Yeshua, but Yeshua has gone into exile within the Greco-Roman mindset, and He's been hijacked by. Um, the Roman Church and things have got muddled up and, and and lies have got in and corruptions have got in and it's been separated from the revelation of who he was within the Torah and it's all, we, we've got to work to reveal that and when we work hard to reveal the truth about who Mashiach is then we can access these levels of soul son of man level of soul and we can be Adon HaShabbat this is he Yeshua was much higher than this. He was Adon HaOlam. You know, he was, he was, he was. Well, you know, and it's hard to say that actually because that is Yod Hey Vav. He was, he was master of the universe, but he was, he was a ha- the highest possible level of soul that could incarnate in the body of a man. That's what he was. He was higher than this. We can access this. We can never ever be at the level that he was. I don't think that's it's possible to attain his level. He was unique. He had a unique job to do. He had a unique job to do to provide a way for us to access these levels of soul that would gain access to our Father in Heaven, the King, and not be subject to the exilic slave mentality uh, of exile. Right, it's got some cr- incredible numbers here. 955 plus 163 equals 1118. That's an incredible number. We might just get round to seeing it today. The master of the Shabbat, Shabbat Adon HaShabbat, he's a code name. He was telling us he's a code name for Mashiach consciousness. He's a code name for Mashiach of Yote Vave, by the way. Um, but he was letting us know who he was when he was saying he's the master of Shabbat. He's a code name for the Mashiach. How do we know? Because the numbers tell us 768 plus 75 plus 843. I've put we'll see over. There's lots that we'll see over. We can't get through it all in one go. Right. This number here, this is the unholy opposite. OK, there's always an unholy opposite. There's always an opposite force. Metatron is opposite Messiah. Metatron is opposite Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay. Um, we get to a stage of maturity where we understand everything is for an ultimate good. So even the whole system of Metatron is for an ultimate good. It's to bring us to that place of maturity. It's the darkness that must be transformed into the light. It's the evil that must be overcome. You know, it's our work to be able to distinguish between light and dark, evil and good and things like that. So there's always, and we've got to have free choice. You have got a choice. You have got to choose to serve something. You either choose, you are either serving your devave or you will be serving something else. And that something else, if you're religious, may be Metatron. And if you're irreligious, it's probably Hasatan himself. Okay, you have a choice. You will be serving something with every thought, word and deed that you do. You have to will and intend to serve your Tevavi at the very least. And yes, our bodies are in a very fallen, corrupted state and it's not always easy to control our bodies to serve the name Yod Hei Vafe. We have selfish, egotistical, evil tendencies and we must do everything we can to overpower those tendencies and humble ourselves so that we are serving the name Yod Hei Vafe in thought, word, and deed and nothing else beside him. And that's what it is to be at these elevated soul levels. Master of Shabbat, like I said, is code name for the Mashiach of Yod Hei Vafe, 768. So there's always going to be an un. An, on an evil opposite and who said this Nichashte. this is what Levan said 
Okay, this is what Laban said. Laban said to Yaakov, Jacob. He said, I have divined. He, says, he, he basically was saying, I've divined that you, I've been blessed on account of you, Yaakov. But this is when, um, you know, they'd parted ways and Yaakov had gone and then it, it, it chased after him. Laban had chased after him to go after his household gods and stuff that Rachel had took. And it actually cost her a life in the end. Anyway, so that's from Genesis 30, 27. 75 so that's why i've put it up there look because master of shabbat is exactly equal to high of divined that's the regular 776 exactly the same 75 ordinal exactly the same and obviously it's got exactly the same um total okay so there's a definite link between this kind of mentality how did Yaakov have to serve Levan for his daughter it was a slave he was robbed and cheated this was this was Yaakov this was Yaakov the father of the 12 tribes it was in his household 14 years it was, it was in it even for longer you know, because then he had to he had to do fourteen years just for his two wives. He was cheated into doing. He was robbed into doing, and then he had to steal away whilst Lavan was away busy doing something else with all the flocks that he'd get gathered, no doubt, at the expense of Yakov slaving away for him. He was cheated and robbed. Okay. This is your metatronic. It's opposite the master of the Shabbat. You've got to see these things very clearly. He, 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 he was the one that enslaved Yaakov and deceived him, right? And then when he worked for his flocks, Le Le Yaakov had to employ all kinds of um, ways in which to get um, some kind of wealth together so that he could eventually leave the household of Levan as he'd been slaving away to this day. You've got to leave it at some point. What gave him the power to leave Levan's household? Yosef. It tells you, the Midrash tells you. The sages know he was given the power to... Yosef was the power that he had to face leave Levan. Why? Because Yosef was the power that would over, overwhelm his brother Esav and that's what he feared. Okay, going from the fat to the frying, frying pan. Okay, it's all right being a slave in Metatron's house. You should see what's coming when we when we get into Aesop's territory. He was frightened and he knew that the strength that he could give birth to to overcome the powers of evil that was represented by brother Aesop was Yosef. And this is what we've got to connect to. This is the force that helps us to overcome our own outer flesh. What is Aesop? What represents our, our bodies? impulses and desires okay so it's one thing not to be so, so subservient to metatron but going from the fat to the frying pan and um, to be so, subservient to asaph it's worse than being subservient to lavan <laughs> you know uh, to be subservient to this is subservient to your higher nature things like paying for your wives and accumulating wealth service to asaph uh, that's your depraved fleshly desires your lusts your greed your base you know, worse than being an animal in some kind. So you've got to understand, in order to leave Laban, you have got to have a power that's uh, that's able to overcome Esav, which is a worse set of slavery in a way than whatever Laban was. Well, at least Laban was Laban's household. It was for holy purposes, like giving and being married and giving birth to healthy children and, uh, you know, the tribes of Israel and... Um, what else was it? You know, building up your flocks and your wealth ultimately. I mean, Asaph's territory? What do you think you're going to be a slave to there? Depravity. Absolute depravity. And you need the power of Yosef before you can leave Levan. So before you can leave the metatronic mindset, you, you need to have the truth regarding Moshiach ben Yosef or Yosef Chai. This has got to be something that you have got very, very firmly in your mind and firmly in your heart. We're going to go and have a look at 843 over. 768, however, that should be 2 times 284. Okay. They did not know that Yosef understood. 768. So there we can see a very powerful link to Yosef. 
They did not know. Who did not know? His brothers did not know. It was Yosef in disguise. Yosef is in disguise at this time now. We are still facing these same problems. We have still got to leave Metatron behind and avoid becoming su subservient to our a a a sav uh, mentalities and desires and lusts um and how do we do that when yosef is still in disguise he's not fully revealed for all the world to see and as a result of that it's very difficult to attach to the full power of mashiach ben yosef um in order to free us completely from these exilic mindsets anyway this is all code for mashiach again look 192 plus 192 that's related to something else that we see later actually and that the add, them, add them both together it comes to 990 what's 990 code name for mashiach mashiach ben david 424 plus mashiach ben yosef is 990 okay exactly the same as they did not know yosef understood they did not know yosef understood the entire concept of the mashiach and how vital it was in order for us to um you know create that channel between heaven and earth they didn't understand that's why they sold yosef into slavery in the first place you know there was um there was this yosef had to go through a correction basically what they did was ultimately for good you know it's like yosef said what you meant for evil god meant for good there's a truth in that we've got to understand everything is perfect because it's all done by your tevafe but he's given us an opportunity to see that perfection how he's been working in secret to make possible um to make possible that opening up of the channel between heaven and earth the truth regarding the concept of mashiach ben yosef and all the united concept of mashiach and giving us a work to do to overcome these very powerful forces by the way very very powerful forces like the metatronic enoch forces and the um edomite um asaph forces and the ishmaelite forces the forces of the clipper that deceive us and delude us so this is where we get to um to this being a revelation of the Mashiach of yod heh vav -He. We've got fantasy fiction versions of who Mashiach is. With this, there's the Mashiach of yod heh vav -He, and this is what is revealed in the Torah. Alphanumerically, by the way, because when you should, when yod heh vav spoke, he spoke simultaneously, you know, uh, verbally and numerically. The, the letters in Hebrew are both verbal and numerical, so we've got to understand them in both verbal and numerical ways. Uh, and hopefully that's what my analysis is doing. Um, bring me great joy doing it, by the way. So 384 is here, look. Two, two times 384 is 768. So that's related to the master of the Shabbat, Mashiach of Yotev Afer. You've got to reach mess messianic consciousness. We've got to cling to this to the to the Mashiach himself in order to elevate us up to those levels where we are no longer slaves to a slave master. We are servants to Yotevavi as children of the king. We're here just to glorify his name. We're here to give honour to his name. We wouldn't want to serve anything else other than our Father in heaven, because only he is worthy of service. Not some slave master, no thanks. Only Yod Hevavi, but we've got to free ourselves from all the exilic forces that um, grab our attention for service. They fill our thoughts full of all kinds of imaginations. They then become the words that we speak and the actions that we do. We've got to free ourselves from this mental mentality. So 78 equals, which 78 here, equals 39, which is the ordinal of Moshe. Two times the ordinal of Moshe. 2 times 39 is 78. So that's that connected to Moshe. But Moshe, okay, is also the 384. Because Moshe is 345 plus the ordinal that we've just talked about comes to 384. Who is the Mashiach of Yodhev Avi? Moshe. Who is who did Moshe become? Well, he tells you a prophet like Moshe, or like me, uh, listen to him when he comes. Moshe came, the soul of Mashiach was first in Moshe. 
the Mashiach of your Tevave first incarnated in the life of Moshe. He was the first redeemer. He will be the last redeemer. He came back at the higher level of Mashiach ben Yosef in order to go after the lost of the house of Israel and others beside. Okay. And he, but, uh, the umbrella term for the Moshiach is Moshe. Moshe will return. That means Yeshua will return. And now the final incarnation of the soul of the Moshiach, the Moshiach of Yod Hevavi, will finally come back and he will be Moshiach ben David. Okay, so he came first as Moshe to redeem the children out of Egypt. He came then as Moshiach ben Yosef to redeem the children out of Esav. And he will be coming back again to unite all humanity together as one and elevated us all up to these messianic levels of awareness and messianic levels of attachment to the name yod heh vav -He. Face to face. Leviathan. Okay, so Leviathan, I've done an analysis, but I've not done a video to this yet. Um, this is another concept that is basically um, very much related to the concept of Yesof, Yesod, Yosef. Um, I can't say at this time exactly how it's related, but it's definitely related to Metatron because all the numbers are pointing that way. It's definitely major connections to the concept of Enoch. Um, so my understanding of Leviathan, it's opposite the holy. It's something to do with the unholy force that prevents us from, or the things that we have to battle against to prevent us from accessing the truth regarding the concept of the Mashiach. It's only an opposite. So this um, is somehow un it's wholly opposite the master of the Shabbat. It's very much related to Da'ath. Okay, there's uh, there's unholy Da'ath and then there's supernal holy Da'ath. The Mashiach is supernal holy Da'ath. Supernal holy knowledge of God. That means you know God. Okay, you don't just n believe in him. It's when we are actually attain that level where our faith is so complete that we know your face to face. And somehow Leviathan is there to prevent that from actually happening or to put up some fight um, to uh, some resistance against us attaining that level of the knowledge of God. Okay, but it will in the end be fully revealed for all humanity. And then you've got Baith Elohim. This is this is the house of God that Yaakov spoke about. Okay, surely this is the house of God. So again, here we've got a connection to that. Master of the Shabbat and the house of God. Okay. Um, interestingly enough, the rules of keeping Shabbat... Um, where they get the 39 Malacha from are from the fact that they weren't allowed to build the temple on the Shabbat. They had to desist from continually building the set temple. So it's all the things that would um, contribute to building the temple. The 39 laws like all to do with weaving and dyeing and uh, tanning and one thing and another and, and all the growing of things because obviously, you know, you've got flax and things that you would need to grow. So there's everything involved in the 39 Malacha they've they've put it down to that would that they would have been doing in the wilderness in order to build the tabernacle in the wilderness mishkan no sorry the mishkan um so this the house of god is obviously very much related to the concept of the temple so we can see how it's related to the shabbat because all those rules that i spoke about are very much related to the rules that that their rules based on um, the fact that in the Torah it says that they didn't build the Mishkan on the Shabbat. <laughs> okay, so their rules came from there. They don't just come, the Jews didn't just make them up. They was inferred within the Torah itself. So they're very much Torah based. But it's when you are under those rules, isn't it? Instead of master of them. It's when you are um, subject to this kind of slave mentality rather than... Um, you've accessed higher levels of consciousness where you know that the Shabbat is just not about keeping rules um, to this degree. But there's a connection there anyway and it's wonderful. There's probably a much deeper connection there but um, uh, maybe other people can get much higher levels of connection than even myself. If we were to meditate on it and look at the numbers a little bit more seriously I could probably come up with something else but there's definitely a connection between being a master of the Shabbat and the concept of the house of God.
to the reasons I've just said. Right, the angels of Yod, the angel of Yod Hevave. This is Metatron. The Enoch literature and other Zoharic literature point to the fact that the angel of God was Metatron. Okay. Um, so we have got this, haven't we? This is opposite the master of the Shabbat. You know, the whole concept, the Me Leviathan is very much related to Metatron, but we've got a direct, a direct opposite here with the concept of the angel of yod Vafe. Okay. Let's see what else we've got. Great. Oh, this is a part of Deuteronomy. I did a teaching about this on Arizal. The first Arizal teaching that I ever did, um, probably over a year ago now, and it's all about the revelation uh, and unity between Moshe and Yeshua, by the way. And um, this this is mentioned. This is the I think it's it's close to the it's close to the very end of um, Deuteronomy anyway. Deuteronomy. Um, it could be thirty four twelve. I'm not too sure now, but um, Hamora Hagadol, great. Oh, but this is related, like I say, very much to relation a revelation of Yeshua, okay, and that comes to seventy five as well. So he is the ultimate master of the Shabbat, and he's the one that enabled us to have um, access to um, to Yod Hey Vav -Hey. Okay, right, now we're going to have a look at this number here. This, you know, there's so much, there's so many numbers to look at, but this is particularly very interesting. So the 1,118, for the Son of Man, he is master of the Shabbat. Okay, eventually we'll look at all these other numbers. I don't think we'll get through them in this lesson, I don't know yet, but... And we've got that number to look at. And this whole concept of Yosef related to this concept of... Um, um, divination because he had the cup of divination and it's worth even having a look at that because as we can see this is very much connected to a concept of um, how you have divined nichashte, um, and then we've got to go remember the master of the Shabbat is the, you know through the concept of Mashiach specifically Mashiach ben Yo Yosef who is talking here Yeshua and then this whole concept of this cup of divination, because that led to the revelation, didn't it, of the brothers? You know, he placed his cup of divination in Binyamin's bag, uh, sorry, sack, and then that ultimately led to the revelation of Yosef being revealed to his brothers, Od Yosef Chai. So it's worth having a look and making that connection because it's wonderful. Right, let's have a look what we've got now then. So, like I say, we're having a look now at um, the 1,118, which was the total, the ordinal and regular. Right, very interesting, um, very, very interesting uh, verse this. You know when I mentioned about um, th there's, there's, there's three things, oh, I think it's in Proverbs when it mentions about the things that um, disquiet the earth, you know, the, um, the, the slave when he becomes a king and the handmaid when she becomes, she upsets the queen and the fool when he's sated with, with bread. And then it mentions about these creatures that are small yet, you know, got a lot to teach us and stuff like that. And one of them's the spider grass with her hands and she's in a king's palaces. It's all coded messages. Okay, because there's, there's a phenomenal coded message in this particular um this particular verse from Prover Proverbs, right? I'll need to bring up the next one to figure out exactly how this is. All oh, right, this is why. So this, this, the spider grass with her hands and she's in the king's palaces. It's all coded message, by the way, because this here, the 2,533, is Sarach Bat Asha spelt out. So that's Sarach. Spelt out to the second fill in 2,230 plus 303. Okay, and that comes to 2,533. And Sarah Bat Asher is the woman, one who informed Yaakov Od Yosef Chai. The brothers were too scared to tell her. This is all according to Midrash. So this is all hidden coded message, which they've inferred from the Torah itself. So she was the one that went to tell um, Yaakov or Yosef Chai and that revived his spirit that means the channel was 
you know, he revived his spirit. So the channel between heaven and earth, there was more abundance coming from heaven, which is represented by Yaakov or represented by the soul um, down to earth. And Sarah Bat Asher is, um, she's one of the five petals that surround the 13 pet. She's one of the five strong leaves that s surround the 13 petals of the um the rose which is which is synonymous with Knesset Israel, the congregation of Israel. Okay, so the top one being Meshach ben Yosef, then Meshach ben David, then Moshe, then Yaakov, and then Sarah Bat Asher. They they numerically the, she shows up in every messianic revelation, Sarah Bat Asher. There's five aspects of, of salvation I would call that show up and she is one of them. And she comes up in the teachings all the time. And this phrase she's just come up up again very very much this phrase this this verse in in proverbs is very very much related to her um because it is the second filling out of her name and it's anna Riesel says anything filled to its second filling re reveals the the essence of it so the essence of sarah is very much connected to this um highly coded message by the way um, of this spider that grasps the hands and that's in the king's palaces okay and this word here te ta pesh potiphar's wife grasped yosef and it's the same words okay so there's a connection there so she was the woman that told yakov or yosef chai but she was also the woman that showed moisha the bones of yosef where the bones of Yosef were. She lived a very, very long time. So she was there before exile. She was one of the 70 going into Egypt. She was. She came out of Egypt. And then she's listed in the census of those going into Eretz Israel. Okay. And apparently, according to Midrash, she lived a long time. She never actually died. So 2,238 is the regular and ordinal of the spider grass with her hands. That 401, by the way, is Nechash. You know, we talked about Nechashti, I have divined, and it's related to the word Nechash, which is serpent. Okay, it's divination. It's it's all from the other side. She is a wholly opposite that, because Nechash comes to 358, which is exactly the same as, um, it's exactly the same as Moshiach. And then if you add the ordinal of um Nechash, which is um, 43, the same as Asav, you get 401. Okay, that's also the Aleph and Tav added together, isn't it? You know, the Aleph Tav. If you add the 400 for the Tav and the 1 for the Aleph, it's also 401. So they're the holy opposites, the serpent. She's a holy opposite, the serpent. Okay. Just gone on a little bit too much. So this 2,238 um, is connected to um, that phrase that we've just done about the master uh, of the Shabbat. Okay. And Sarah said, and to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given a thousand pieces of silver. Highly, highly messianic, by the way. This is, Sarah was, went into Avimelech and Avimelech and she was captured and um, you know Abraham had said tell her you're my sister so she was captured and then Avimelech was household had suffered some curses etc and then what happened was um, he, had, he paid her these thousand silver pieces but it's all coded absolutely coded there should be a shin there by the way for Sarah okay I'll probably go change that now Okay, so I've just brought this forward as well so you can see the link for the Son of Man, is Master of the Shabbat, it comes to 1,118, which we can see is linked to this because two times that is this. That's why I've connected it to that. Okay, really very, very important, isn't it? Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, Havaya, which that's the name that you say Kabbalistic instead of your Tevav here, Kabbalistically, is our God, Havaya is one. So that's just where I copied that from. Comes to 1,118.
Okay, so we can see the direct link to that. That's a regular for Shema Yisrael. Okay, very, very, very powerful. This is what we wanted to see revealed, the oneness of your Tevafe. Because their power is gone. So 482 plus 77 comes to 559. So obviously two times four times two times 559 is the 1118. We have got to this state precedes the revelation of the Mashiach. According to Rashi, this state of because their power is gone is what precedes um or it's it's got given another name, Shifla Ma'od. Um, what does Shifla Me'od means? Very degraded. You know, we've got to reach this state where we very degraded. We burnt out being slaves. That's the state that we reach. We're sick of the suffering that being a slave brings. You know, we, we, the slave master, you know, like Pharaoh hardens his heart so you end up having to go gather your own straw in. When you get caught up in that metatronic system, it burns you out, you know, because you you constantly have I done this right? What do I do about this? And what about what Lord have I got to do? I've oh, I've just used teaspoon and I forgot. I've just touched it against that. Is it yeah? You know, is it hot enough to cause cooking? And it just goes on and on and whatever. It's it's just and then you've got to consult these books to see if that you're doing good because you are you you're still maintaining holy and do you have to recash this? It goes on, but it doesn't doesn't bring you any benefit in your life. You know, it it's like it didn't it didn't. I was doing all this, running around, you know, doing all these lots, and, and my life was just going from suffering to suffering. You know, um, it wasn't like um, a great blessing for me. I, I will put it. I will put it like that. I still do keep Torah and I do keep the mitzvahs and the commandments. Um, because I'll tell you why. Because um, as far as I'm able to perceive, the ultimate destination where we're getting to is a place where. Um, there will be unity between the Torah of Moshe and the Torah of Mashiach ben Yosef. Now, I aren't qualified to understand what that unity will be until Mashiach comes and says, oh, this is what will be, Stephanie, and I'll be doing that. You know, but in the meantime, I keep the Torah, I keep Shabbat, I keep the festivals, I keep kosher. Okay, but I don't do it in a legalistic way at all. And if I feel for a minute that I am doing it in some way to earn favour or reward or avoid punishment, I will stop myself. I have to really meditate and say, no, I am serving Yod Vavit and only him. I am serving him in joy and willingly. I'm not serving a slave, slave mentality. I am in the presence of my father in the king's palaces um, and, and I'm serving him in love and joy. So after, after, it's, it's a really difficult period because I feel like we're pioneers. You know, we are like the first fruits, if you like, trying to understand and trying to open up to the light that has been revealed to us and being brave enough to walk in this light, you know, that's been revealed to us. And sometimes that's letting go of a lot that has fought, that a lot of the darkness that has formally held us bound. We have got to literally walk away from the chains that have, all, that have bound us. And that takes time. You know, you, you can't rush chains. Changes, you know, real, true, everlasting changes take time. But as this light is emerging within us and as the Torah is revealing um, the secrets to us and as we are getting closer and closer to that time of redemption, a light is shining in this world. We've just got to be able to receive that light and allow that light to infuse our being and walk in that light. And this is something that I'm finding um, is happening in my own life and I know it's happening in other people's lives. And, and and just walk in the power of complete faith in the name of your Tefafa. But I will tell you now that I didn't get to this place where I got to without first, you know, hitting rock bottom. You know, hitting that place where you've got no other choice but to call out to the name of your Tefafa for help. I was suffering. I, I, I went to, to a very, very low place in my life. Place of grinding teeth, let me tell you. Especially when I'd given up my faith in Yeshua. It was not a pleasant experience, but it was uh, from there, um, that uh, place where you've completely no power, 
um, to make progress on your uh, own, then suddenly the light of yod heh vav -Heh is is able to intercede in that situation and deliver you from it. Right, this 482, their power, the power is a revelation of the truth. Yosef is still alive. Why do we know that? Their power is gone. Yaakov rectified, that is, with the additional vav that he gets from Eliyahu Anavi. Okay, Elijah the prophet that must precede a revelation of Mashiach ben David. The regular and ordinal, the ordinal of Yaakov rectified is 53 Adam together, 241, which that, two times that. We've no power when we don't have the truth regarding the concept of Mashiach. Like Yosef, he was in a state of mourning until he was revived by Sarah Bat Asher with the truth. Od Yosef Chai. Okay. And then that seemed fully, fully rectified with the additional Vav. That Vav represents the truth. Why do we know that? Because Vav is the sixth letter. Vav times Vav is 36. And the ordinal for truth, Emeth, is 36. Okay. So there's a connection. And choose good. So we've got to reject this metatronic system. We've got to have that strength to stop serving this slave master, <laughs> you know, and go through that process of redemption. So that's a very important thing. We've got to be able to first identify, well, what is good and what is not good. Uh, we've got to reject the evil and choose good. And we can only do that when we are empowered with the truth. Okay. Da'ath. This is what I talked about. Knowledge. Da'ath is, this is actually what da'ath and knowledge. As in, chokhmah bina ved da'ath, it's usually, or wed da'ath. Chokhmah bina and da'ath. Wisdom, knowledge, and, sorry, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Chokhmah bina ved da'ath. Um, so that there, ved da'ath and knowledge. Um, comes to 559 we've got we want to get to a state of the knowledge of god though where where you know our supernal da'ath is filled with the knowledge of the mashiach moisha represents the supernal da'ath the, the the sphere of the supernal da'ath the not the holy knowledge and this becomes the seat of consciousness through which we're able to perceive the name yod he vav he Okay, um, if we don't have Moshe there, we'll have a serpent there instead. If we don't have the Mashiach at the realm of our supernal da'ath, our knowledge, our knowledge, our holy knowledge, we will have something else there instead. We will have the opposite of, of the Mashiach, which is um, the serpent. And I've already said they've got the same gematria. Nachash serpent is opposite Ma Mashiach. It's both have 358. So we've got to restore our holy knowledge and that is all linked to the truth as well. The truth about what? The truth about Od Yosef Chai. It's all about the concept of Mashiach Ben Yosef. And what Yod Hev Avi has been doing in this period of exile, to which he, when he's been exiled into Edomite exile. Arise, anoint him, for this is he. This is uh, from 1 Samuel, this is regarding King David, isn't it? 559. So we can see all these glorious things it's related to. 136, by the way, is the ordinal for this. And 136 is Kise Dawid, David's throne, God into Vilna Go, and David's throne is Mashiach ben Yosef. So the whole suffering of Mashiach ben Yosef in exile and all the work that he attains to gather in the lost holy sparks, including my own soul, and elevate us up so that we become masters of the Shabbat like him and children of the king in the king's palaces. Um, all that work that he is doing continually, working in our lives to shine the light of truth and elevate us up and push us forward into the redemption. Okay, it's all wonderful stuff. It's all yod he -Vav -Heh. Okay, it's all ultimately yod he -Vav -Heh, but this is the way he's chosen to work. Right, 695, which is those two added together, is 139 times 5. And that's Yon Hanavi. And we know the only sign that Mashiach ben Yosef gave to um, the people who asked for a sign was a sign of Yonah to a wickedness and adulterous generation. We are wicked and adulterous because we are busy serving Metatron instead of Yod Hei Okay, we don't need that mindset. 
and you will make two golden cherubim you'll make them have them hammer work from two ends of the art cover comes to 559 ordinarily who are the cherubim well according to the zohar one of the cherubims metatron okay so we're getting links to metatron all the time right look at this this is glorious and there was no other prophet who arose in israel like moses whom the lord knew face to face okay so that comes to 2236 and this is connected to all that obviously right um what else were i wanting to say about that you know the prophet like Mo Mo Moses. That's definitely Mashiach ben Yosef. The, the, when you do the numbers for that, it's one hundred percent. It's Mashiach ben Yosef. And then we've got this one. So it was when the ark set out. Moshe would say, "Arise, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered back, be scattered, and may those who hate, hate you flee from you." That is two thousand two hundred and thirty-six regular. I mentioned this the other day on a teaching that I did. It's absolutely beautiful. This is what they sing when the ark comes out of the uh, you know the to bring the torah scrolls out of the holy ark in the synagogue so before you read the shabbat uh, sorry it's but before you read like shabbat torah or whenever the torah is read for the festivals or the it's also read on a monday and a thursday in the synagogue and stuff like that um the this this is sang and it's all wonderful and and there's a separate part of the Torah where you've got these backward facing nuns and as you can see this part of the verse and some of the next verse on is is written here you know between these two inverted nuns where the nuns are turned backwards it's all what wonderful glorious stuff it's very symbolic this is um, according to the sages they say that this makes seven books of Torah because this part, this verse here, and the little bit else extra that's added on to this, um, that constitutes one book of Torah. So the book of Numbers is then split up into three separate books. The book prior to this inverted known, this couple of verses, and then the book um, that comes after. So that would make seven books of Torah in total. And they represent, the, I think, the seven pillars of wisdom that's mentioned that the um, world was found, founded on okay what we're looking at now all right so mentioned about the divination didn't i of yosef let's just quickly have a look at this so is not this the one of my master's drinks is is not this the one my master drinks from why he even divines with it you have done evil by the way have you have acted so it was set, it was set up work there this was planted into Benjamin's sack this cup of divination okay why he even divines with it 752 122 874 and, and you, know, you can understand because the word divines nechesh yenachesh is exactly the same as um nechashti i have divined and that was related to laban being the master of the shabbat so laban really represents the metatronic um system don't don't you've got to basically slave away for laban to get uh you know your wife and 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 and, and, and you know your flocks and so it was that whole concept i, I have divined and then that linked back to Yosef so now we're having a, just a quick look through this because it's all interesting stuff it all helps liberate us from that metatronic mindset and it helps us to establish a more messianic consciousness because we're really looking at the perfection of yod heh because like I say when he spoke in Hebrew he spoke in numbers and verbally we've got to be able to c communicate in numbers and verb ver numbers and verbally as well you know, like this, and this gives us a message that really speaks to us and helps us to make those necessary connections that must be made. Okay, why? He even divines with it 752, 122, ordinarily 874. That is exactly the same as whose son? From 1 Samuel 17, 57, um, Ben Me, um, whose son, or the Ben who um that comes to 1102 which is this is exactly the same as a muna you know Yo Yo yosef was enslaved for two extra years after he divine after he um 
interpreted the dream of the cupbearer. He, he, when the cupbearer was going to back to Pharaoh to be reinstated in his position as the cupbearer, and the chief baker was going to be executed, Yosef said to him, um, remember me to Pharaoh and take me out of here. That showed a lack of faith on two counts, right? So he suffered two full years in prison before Pharaoh had the dream with the cows and the thin cows and the um, lush grain as of wheat and the thin grains of wheat and Yosef was brought from the pit after two full years in order to interpret that dream for Pharaoh and then it became the viceroy a viceroy means you are the monarch's representation on earth okay so you are the monarch's representation he was Pharaoh's representative the Mashiach is the Mashiach ben Yosef and the Mashiach is Yod Hevav is representation, representative on earth. Okay. <clears throat> so this 2000 millennia since Yeshua was died represents those two years that must be completed. And we're in 1988th year now, must be completed. This is according to Isaac Newton's astronomical calculations. He's 2000 years must be fully completed. So we're at least 1988. That was from Pesach 2021. Okay. There's a chance it could be three years earlier. So it, there's a chance we could be 1991 as of Pesach. And with nine years left till the completion of those 2,000 years that represent um, the need for us to be perfected in our faith, our perfective, uh, perfection of two aspects of faith um, out of the 13 aspects of faith that we should have, complete faith in the name yod heh vav one of them being faith in the coming of Mashiach, the true coming of Mashiach, the Mashiach of the Mashiach of yod heh vav as revealed in the Torah, not the Mashiach that we've inherited, the lies from the religion into which we've been born, or we've, we've chosen, and all the false doctrines, and all the false teachings, and all the metatronic ways of perceiving uh, reality, that are going to block us from knowing the true Messiah, the true Mashiach of yod heh So the coming of the Mashiach, the Mashiach, not our fantasy fiction Mashiachs, and then um, faith in the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> so obviously Amuna comes to 102, the ordinal of Amuna is 39, which is exactly the same ordinal as Moshe. Add them together to come to 141. So we can see the regular of this is connected to Amuna. But here it's connected to why he even divines with it. Okay. And we know that um, Yosef is very much connected to the concept of rectification of our faith. Why? Because a, his, his name, Yosef, comes 156 plus 48. Ordinarily, add them together, come to 204, which is two times a Muna. And like I say, we're, we're in this exile, this 2000 year exile, for two counts of lack of faith. The lack of faith in the coming of the Mashiach of Yodhe Vave, and the lack of faith in the re 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 resurrection of the dead. But when he comes back to life in full capacity as king over kings, representing the name Yodhe Vave down here on earth for all humanity to see. Then we will have, we won't need faith in the resurrection of the dead anymore. We will know um, Yod Hevafe through all that he has done. You know, the, the resurrection will have occurred. 7, 752, so that's all connected. Oh, and by the way, these two added together, the 39 and the 50, come to evil inclination. Okay, where has Yeshua descended to and been imprisoned? In the Edomite exile the exile of rome okay greco-roman exile and um that is synonymous with asav and asav represents our evil inclination okay so he is suffering in there until we've perfected our faith a secret from me to you hi oh it couldn't be hide me from you that comes to 874 this is connected to the mysterious name sa'el and sa'el is the mysterious name of god that is used is it's 91 satel so comes to 91 okay you can see it's the initial letters in highlighted in red just you just rearrange them satel okay so this is like um 
it's the, uh, the, the gematria of that's 91, which is exactly the same as, as um, yod Hey vav adonai add them together, and that comes to 91, 65 and 26. Okay? Um, so there is a connection. And again, it's a unity, isn't it, between heaven and earth. And we're in this time of... We're in this time of rectification where it's not always obvious the truth about yod vav it's not even obvious who we're serving most of us are serving metatron and we don't it's not even obvious to us who we are actually serving we're serving this 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 understanding of yod vav that's constantly changing like the revolving sword we've clung to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and we're not even trunk clung to the tree of life and we think we clung to the tree of life um, and, and and we've got to really and but, but however Yod Hey Vav this name Sa'el according to the Baal Shem Tov is Yod Hey Vav hidden even in the evil okay even in the evil is hidden and that when we transform it when we get to the end of history and we're able to look back and we are at the end able to look back now we have got what's called hindsight so we can look back now over these last 2000 years and figure out exactly what your Vav has been doing and when we're able to figure out exactly what your Vav has been doing by giving us the challenge to sort out all these dark doubts and sort out all this sheker and sort out all these uh, our evil inclinations and our imaginations and restore our Hebraic mindset and restore the truth about the Mashiach of Yod Vavi rather than our fantasy fiction, we will then see that even the darkness itself is just part of a glorious plan that Yod Vavi set in place for us to be able to fight and battle against all these forces in order to enter into those gloriously elevated states of consciousness and nearness to his name and somehow feel like we've actually earned that. We've toiled and earned it. Yes, we was provided access through Yeshua, but we have still been toiling in our life against the forces of darkness. Okay. Um, in order to fully reveal the presence of Yote Vava in our life, Permanently. Okay. Joseph has surely been torn up. Toraf, Traf, Yosef. So I did a full analysis on this. It's absolutely glorious. But it just all links in, doesn't it? You know. Um, he's, he's reckoning on that he's divining with his cup. And where the truth is, and they were reckoning on that Yosef had been torn up. You know that that was that. This is this was Yosef's lie, and this was the brother's lie, wasn't it? Yosef has surely been torn up. They presented the court to the father Yaakov, and Yaakov looked at the court and said, "Yosef's been, you know, torn up and eaten by beasts. You know, animals, wild animals. So it's it's even in the lie and the deception, the truth will ultimately be revealed." There's only your day of and he's working in secret in a lot of ways. Until we are able to walk in that light on our own, you know, until we are empowered to walk forward and proceed with faith till the final redemption, you know. And then we've got Pinchas here. Okay, so Pinchas comes to 208, uh, Ordinal 64 comes to 272. This is the square ordinals of Pinchas. So each of the letters squared, the ordinal letters squared. So that's 17 squared, 10 squared, 14 squared, 8 squared and 15 squared. And that's them. That goes to 874. 874 is 2 times 437. 208 is Moshech ben David, the ordinal of Moshech ben David plus the ordinal of Moshech ben Yosef. Okay. When... David is spelled rectified with an additional yod. And then we've got Ani Shalom. I am peace. I am peace. That's when he was dwelling in the tents of Kedar, isn't it? 437, so that's from Psalm 127, verse 7. So we can see that's linked to all that. Ani Shalom, I am peace. This is the revelation of Mashiach ben David that precedes the revelation no, it comes af once we've done all that we need to do, um, all the footsteps below, um, we've got to accomplish 
um, whilst Mashiach ben Yosef is hidden, we've got a work to do to gather in all the holy lost tribes. Well, just like Yosef, while he was in concealment, was so busy. He was the actual viceroy of Pharaoh himself. But what, we, what he was doing in that time was he was preparing the way for an ultimate redemption. Okay, and he was making sure that when the redemption needed to be, uh, you know, when, um, uh, well, it's just for an ultimate redemption. It's like he says, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Um, light, um, or the square ordinal of R, light is 437. So we can see all that. Talked about being empowered by the light, the light of the name yod heh and um, That's what... And, and, and this state of shalom is brought about when we rectify our evil inclination. You know, Yeshua is not only suffering in Edomite exile, in, 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 in an exile to our evil inclination, or quite the exile of Rome, he's doing that in order to transform our inner Esav or our outer Esav, these, all these pulses, from evil into shalom. What can be rectified of that? So, for example, if we've got a lust, you know, we're driven by lusts and various greeds, how can that be transformed from a negative into a positive where we are, instead of serving ourselves and ended up dead as a consequence of our selfish, egotistical, um, consuming nature, how can we transform that into something um, holy and the way that the the, the way that it is in um, from a Kabbalistic point of view is that it's important Asaph just wants to receive 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 he wants 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 for himself self self all the time he would eat the whole world if he could you know enough is never enough for him but when it comes to what can you use that desire to receive for in a holy way you'd have avid desires to give us everything it wants to pour out everything and you need a vessel that wants to receive everything in order to get what yodi vavi himself desires to give us the only problem is if it's self-centered and egotistical god can't give us that because it ends up in destructive ways we've got to transform our desire to receive into a desire to receive for the sake of holiness to give our creator pleasure because he desires to bestow upon us not for our own selfish ends and that comes around when we subdue the selfish egotistical nature of wanting to receive and have that instead of holiness and that's where shalom comes between body and soul and then once we have that shalom between our body and soul then we can receive all that your day of vavi wants to give us so this is we're in a process of rectifying our vessels our selfish egotistical grab grab kind of um vessels that we've got transforming them into vessels of shalom and with those vessels of shalom receiving all that your day vavi all the light the awe that your David desires to bestow upon us. And the Lord saved David, so that comes to 122. And this is in the verse, this is um, in the verse when he put governors throughout all the land of Edom. And then the Lord saved David as a consequence of him putting governors in Edom. What does Edom represent? Well, the, this exile that we're in now, it represents evil inclination. It represents Asav, these lower natures that need subduing. So did King David put governors in that. That's really, we've got to have some holy force to govern those natural natures and intent inclinations that we've got to subdue them to the side of holy to form the vessels that need to be formed man is a tree of the field comes to 92 um, which is exactly the same as Mishish, the ordinal of Mashiach ben David spelt rectified exactly the same as that that's 92 that's 116 add them together you get 208 so 92 is this spelling of Mashiach ben David so obviously man is a tree of the field this is a curious saying um, it's one that t sages go a lot this whole concept of man being a tree of a field we have to experience in the field of life um, which sometimes can be the field of Esav or it can be the field of the Holy Shekhinah it just depends on the way that we live our life 
but um you know we have to experience god in in not just read about him in a book and not just sit there in the yeshiva for hours and hours on the end um figuring him out from written text we've got to experience him in every single aspect of our life and that's that to me is like this man is a tree of a field and and also there's an there is an all the opposite to that Yosef was sent out to the fields actually by Yaakov to his brother so there is a connection to Yosef it mentions about um Yosef being sent out to the field um and then there's all kinds of um midrashic teachings about that you know the last teachings that Yaakov taught him about the um the cow with a broken neck because they find a man out in the field who's been murdered and they don't know who's murdered him etc there's all kinds of teachings i'm not going to go into that now but yosef was sent out into the field we've all been sent out into the field and this as well is um the same gematria as shaddai as in el shaddai but shaddai is also the same gematria as metatron 314 so there's a link between metatron and the name the holy name of shaddai and that's therefore related to ha sade ha sade he's got the same match as shaddai um what was is what will be this is taken from proverbs that's 121 the initial letters spell moshe what was is that what will be Basically, Moshe was the first redeemer. He will be the last redeemer. Okay, it's as simple as that. That's what that means. It's basically because Moshe represents the soul of the Moshiach. The soul of Moshiach incarnates at different levels, like I've already explained in the teaching. Adonai written out in full the ordin, the regular, and then the ordinal of that. Um, you know, it's very much related to that that we were talking about, weren't we? The master of the Shabbat, Adon. Um, Hashabat, this is Adonai, um, very much related though, isn't it? And Adonai is very much related to also the um, Malkuth, it's the name of the Malkuth, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. Um, and its breath, it has gathered them in. So, this is about, um, this is taken from Isaiah. Um, and it's seek out the book of Yod Hey Vav Hey, very very profound messianic, um, t very 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 profound messianic revelation. I've done a full analysis of that verse. Wonderful, wonderful gematria. I've never put it to um, a video yet, but Warucho Hu Kabetzan, and um, that Kabetzan is a hundred is fifty three, exactly the same as the Ordinal of Yeshua, and Kabetzan means a beggar. Um, and it's basically being interpreted that like Yeshua is out in this exile with us, gathering in the lost holy um, sparks. And this is what will ultimately form the sheaf of Yosef. And that sheaf will arise and all the other sheaves will bow down to that sheaf. So Yeshua is collecting in all the lost holy sparks, including all the lost of the house of Israel. And he's doing it in a very hidden, concealed way in exile at this time. And I will move at my own slow pace. These are the words that Yaakov uttered to um, Esav. He went, and after he'd left Laban, he went back into the land of Israel. And his, his brother came out to meet him. And he said to his brother, oh, I'll, I'll meet you. I'll come to Mount Sa'ir. But he never did. He went to Sukkoth. He wasn't ready to overcome. He wasn't ready to yet go in to Esau's territory and overwhelm him. So he overwhelmed him. So he went to Sukkoth. But the sages say, the Sadiq spoke, and this has got to yet be fulfilled. He will meet him in his own territory on Mount Sa'ir. And um, at the time when he's able to fully overwhelm Esav and bring him and subdue him to the side of Holy. And how will he do that when he is told, Od Yosef Chai? He is empowered by the truth, a true revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay. And the bones of Yosef with the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt. That comes to. Um, let me see where I got this from then. All right, the Mispagadol, the Mispagadol regular and the ordinal Mispagadol, that means the big numberings, 
comes to 4,513, which is 37 times 122. So as we can see, that is linked to all these concepts, what we've been speaking about. You know, it's just that um, promise to Yosef, weren't it, not to leave him in Egypt, but to take him and bury him in the land of Israel. And he is buried in the land of Israel because I have actually been to the grave of Yosef in Shechem, which is now called Nablus. Um, then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and they spoke saying, I will sing to the Lord for very exalted is he, a horse and rider he cast into the sea. That comes to the Mispagadol, uh, ordinal value of the Mispagadol is exactly the same as that. So this is a song of, of redemption, isn't it, that must be sung. And uh, when all this that we're talking about is revealed to us and we're elevated up to that level of being redeemed rather than trapped in this slave mentality, that we often find ourselves trapped in and then this is this is a lesson to learn isn't it it's all mountains of gilboa let there be no dew or rain upon you nor shall you be fields of heave offerings for there the shield of the mighty was rejected Saul's, Saul's shield was as though not anointed with oil and that's very messianic text. I've done an all analysis on that verse as well. 807, 8,740. And it's connected to all these. Okay. And obviously, why did he end up dead on the field and looked as if he hadn't been anointed? Because he went to a witch who divined and brought... He, who brought, he actually did go do divination. Yosef was lying when he was saying he divines with this divination cut. Saul actually went and the consequence of Saul going was he fell on the battlefield with with Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan. Um, so we can see that um, this was obviously the consequence of a unholy uh, encounter with divination and yet um, we've got that linked up there um, and, and, and Yosef himself as a consequence of this exile this says Beli Moshiach um, Yosef is very similar to this because he's dressed in garments of exile like he's taken on like, like you imagine him being exiled into the Roman Catholic Church, and you know the light of Yeshua, the light of this Mashiach Ben Yosef, being trapped in all this ritualistic, um, you know, falsehood, and all the garbage that comes with him being exiled into the Greco-Roman mindset and the Western culture and stuff like that. It's really as if he has not been anointed with oil. It's very difficult to discern, um, you know, un unless you've had a, 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 a an encounter with the hidden light of Mashiach ben Yosef, you know, that's brought you to life whilst you've been in exile. Um, it's very hard for other people to see those people who have encountered the soul of Mashiach ben Yosef and that light has brought them to life and illuminated their souls and he's ever he's coming in ever increasing capacities ever, ever more light within within, within our lives um, but to some people looking on the outside when you've got all these cr cr Christians going around keeping pagan festivals and eating pork and stuff it looks as if if this is if they're representing Yosef it looks as if he's without the anointed oil it looks as if he's Bli Moshiach not, a, not an anointed one um, I mean it says Bli Moshiach Bershomen um, um, but them words there, Bli Moshiach, it, it's just without Moshiach. With, it looks like Yosef at this time, Moshiach ben Yosef, is not anointed as Moshiach. It looks as if he's actually the opposite. You know, when you when you look at the way that he's been dressed for the last 2,000 years, you know, putting on Nazi officers' uniform and going and killing Jews in the name of Jesus as crusaders and stuff like that, it's very much as if, we're dealing with something other than Mashiach ben Yosef. It looks like we're actually dealing with Satan. And to all intents and purposes, it is. You know, um, he has descended into an exile that is very, 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 very dark. And he is a, is, is left a very, very, very dark history. And that is why we need to be overwhelming this reality with the truth. 
because you imagine that's the only power when we see that it's only your Vavi that has been given us a very very difficult work to do um to subdue these forces of evil and subdue these forces of Shecha and to be able to reach that place where we say Od Yosef Chai and in Od Milvado there is nothing except your Tevafe um, we will be thankful that we were given such an opportunity to battle against these forces but when we are battling with them up front it's very difficult to see it's only when we actually subdue those forces and look back and have the hindsight that we have now got that we and then we can see that there's only your the old yosef Chai and an old milvador okay okay let's just go out and have another look at this um divination because if we just drop, drop it down to the actual divination words, Nachesh, Ye, Nachesh, this reveals some extraordinary stuff as well because it's really a revelation. It's all code name for telling them, it was telling them he's the Mashiach. Look at this. So divines, 76, 7, 000, um, 726, 96, regular, sorry, 96 ordinary, together they come to 822. 726 is 2 times 363, which is 2 times Hamoshiach, the Moshiach. Okay. So it was basically a coded message. Um, Leviathan again comes in here. The stats, um, uh, what is that? Squared ordinal, sorry, of each letter in the word Leviathan, 960. So we can see a link to that. That's 10 times. So we can see again a link, this concept of um, Leviathan. It's very much related to the concept of Metatron, isn't it? It's the unholy um, opposite, the supernal Da'ath that we should have if we had the truth, the Od Yosef Chai, regarding the concept of the Mashiach. Okay, this channel between heaven and earth, and some, somehow we've not got the truth, we haven't got the knowledge um, in this state of exile. We're in a place of rectifying that. Um, so we've got these unholy opposites usually in charge, like metatronic mindsets and uh, things like that. For 70 years, like the days of one king, this, according to the Talmud, the one king is the Mashiach, by the way. So again, we've got uh, hints to the concept of Mashiach. I'm just going to go through this quite quickly because we've gone through enough now. It's just really backing up what I've already said. And not erase his name. So we want to get, and that's Yamacha Hamashiach. There, the, those light are highlighted in red. The exact same letters there, Hamashiach. Well, lo yemacha shemo, and not erase his name. Not erase whose name? Well, the the Mashiach's name, but he has been erased, doesn't it? And um, four hundred and forty-six comes to Hamath. Ninety-five is Hamelech. Five hundred and forty-one is Yisrael. So the king of Yisrael, in truth, is the one uh, which shouldn't be a name erasing his name, so that we can have the true. King of Israel revealed. It was it was um, Sheikh Ben David when he's fully fully revealed. Right. Instead, we've got this situation. Yemach Shemo with Zikro. Zikro. This is in exile. May his name be erased on his memory. The name of Yeshua has been erased. Rabbinic Judaism. They're taking the letter Ayn out. So this comes to six hundred forty-three, hundred twenty-one, and that together comes to seven hundred sixty-four. Okay. If we ha add this number and this number up it comes to 1089 so we unite them together because obviously it's part of yod Vavi's plan to have the name of the mashiach erased so he would go into um be disguised just like yosef was disguised okay in order for us to toil and overcome our egos in order to reveal the truth that old yosef chai Okay, all the things I've been speaking about. So, 1089, those two added together, um, that's the final revelation of the King of Israel, isn't it? But in the meantime, we've got Sheikh ben Yosef suffering in exile with us until we overcome the forces of the evil inclination and all the forces of darkness that would subdue him, like Metatron and Leviathan and uh, Levan kind of mentalities. We need to get to the redemptive mentalities where the Mashiach is there instead of all these forces <coughs> of concealment. 
Okay, Yosef made himself known exactly the same. Look, as opposite that, may his name be erased in his memory. Okay, we've got Yosef made he make himself known. That's got to happen. May it happen very soon. Yaakov and Esav together. Okay, um, five hundred fifty-eight units between body and soul. Ninety. That, that's Melech. That's Hamelech. Ninety-five. That's Melech king. So we want him to reveal the king. Who is the ultimate king? yod heh eh? And then if we add these two up, which is Yaakov ra rectified with the additional Vav, which we've come across in these teachings before, plus Esav there, unified, the rectified Yaakov unified with Esav, comes to 564, and but it's an ordinal of 96. Okay. And these well, might be some more numbers. This, 564... This is the concept that uh, I've been talking about. Yote Vave made one opposite the other. Okay, so for everything unholy, sorry, sorry, for every holy force, you've got an unholy opposite counterforce. Why? So it maintains free choice. We have got to have free choice. We have got to choose good and reject evil. That's what we've got to do. We've got we have got a free choice. In order to make a free choice, you can't make holiness obvious. You can't just slap it in people's faces. That's why it's concealed. Okay, and that's why you've got opposite forces, forces of concealment that hide the revelation of the truth. My name is within him. This refers to Metatron. This is the angel of the Lord, which says obey him because my name is in him. Shmi Bir Kabor. And the name that is within him is Shaddai. Okay, that's according to the commentaries. That's according to what the sages say. So this refers to Metatron. And we can see the link here, can't we? Until this is established, the unity between Yaakov and Esav, the subduing of the evil inclination, subduing of the body to the soul, we've got Metatron there instead. <laughs> this will bring a revelation of Mashiach and until then, we've got Metatron, the angel of the Lord with his name in his slave instead of a king. And then angel of his face. This is another appellation for Metatron. That comes to 96. So again, until we've got unity between body and soul, between Israel and nations, between female and male, between heaven and earth, between there's all kinds of ways of saying the same thing. Okay, Mashiach of yod heh uh, This is this... Um, that should be there's, there's an extra mem on there it should be just Mashiach of Yod so I'll just correct that <clears throat> okay so it's corrected now Mashiach of Yod these are the ordinals squared ordinals of each letter Mashiach Yod comes to 960 so we can see a clear link What's opposite Levi? What's opposite the Mashiach of Yod Hevave Leviathan? So the Mashiach of Yod Hevave, like I says, is is a is supernal the Af. It's what's revealed in the mind of God, but this is what we've got instead: Leviathan revealed in the minds of our fantasy fiction version of Mashiach. You know, um, it's a concealment rather than a revelation. Um, and the tree of knowledge where it had the ath so again we've got that connection to the tree of the knowledge supernal the ath the mispagadol of that is 96 the mispagadol ordinal should i say is 96 so that's connected to all that for dogs have surrounded me okay so that is connected up to this um divines nachesh ye nachesh Okay, so obviously, whilst Yosef's hidden, um, you know, he's suffering in exile, isn't he? He's suffering away from his father, he's away from all the holy links, you know, suffering in, in exile in all these stupid ways into which we've caused him to descend, like all the rituals of the Catholic Church, all the Christian rituals, all the ways he's descended into Erevrav doctrination as well. It's just foul and awful. Um, that should actually have a calf in front of it. Sometimes what happens is when I copy it in the Hebrew, for some reason it drops the first letter. <laughs> so that's ki servavune kelavim. Okay. 
And then the light of the moon shall be like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days. On the day the Lord shall bind the fracture of his people, and the, sh and the stroke of their wound he shall heal. Heal, that comes to 822. We await that day, don't we? You know, we await that day, which is opposite this. The power of, um, you know, the power of the Mashiach to be revealed. That's what we're waiting for. And the healing that will come as a consequence. May that day come quickly. Right, going back to this here, the 189 and the concept of the Mashiach, we've got, I, I am the Lord and besides me there is no saviour. That's from Isaiah 43, 11. Basically, there is no saviour except that, that he and, but his salvation, the salvation of your day five, is revealed through the concept of Mashiach, okay? Because it comes to 1089, which is exactly the same as this. This is what re reveals the salvation, the Yeshua of your Tevafe. Okay? Um, and, it's, and it's also related to um, the sheaths. Um, 363 is 3 times 121. So this is the sheaf. Like Yosef said, my sheaf arose. Um, and it's all just all just so glorious you know it's all linked up and it's all wonderful so the the salvation of your Tevafe is a revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef with his name erased and then that time where he's fully revealed and his name fully uh, restored to the glory of the name your Tevafe by the way right just one more look at this master of the Shabbat um, for the son of man he is the master of the Shabbat we're going to have a look at this number here the Mispah Gadol of this if we add up I mean there's so many numbers I could look at I can't possibly do them all right um, let's have a look at this one then the the Mispah Gadol the regular and the ordinal added up and that's R light 270 is light comes to 3582 which is six times 597 okay if we add this up and this number here which is um we get that from the regular plus the miss pagadol comes to that if so if we add that up and that up we've got this number here okay so let's go and have a look what they are then so we've got this Sa'el again we've actually got the name Sa'el not the verse that indicates the name holy Saint, name Sha'el Sa'el that comes to a square only of 370 which is exactly the same as this up here the ordinal of the regular um, and then the ordinal of the Miss Pagod all added together comes to 370 so obviously we want we what did we say about that that is god's power to hide himself in the evil so we have to sometimes experience these metatronic mindsets and all this slave task mastering kind of uh, mindset for us to be elevated up to that level of the master of the shabbat we've got to take all that and transform the darkness and concealment into revelation itself and that is done through the power of the name of sa'el which is really reminding us that evil is just there for you to transform from the darkness that it is into revelation youth na'ar this is one of the appellations of metatron he's called a youth why because in terms of angels he's young why is he young because he was first enoch and um you know the most of the angels predated that he was originally a man on earth and then he was transformed he was enoch was no more and became metatron angel metatron so he was only one of another angel that had um human origin i think sandal font was one could be wrong with that one though but so 730 this is an appellation for metatron so we can see it's connected this is the unholy opposite this is youth as well and it's very much like restricted mindsets restricted consciousness where we haven't fully elevated up to our messianic consciousness when we're just aware there's only your divine nothing else beside and we are children in his holy palace serving the our king in love and joy rather than as slaves go back to Yaakov which is an aspect of the redeemer 
um, an aspect of the salvations uh, and, and uh, an aspect of the actual concept of Mashiach. The truth, the letter vav of the name yod he vav he. So that's one spelling of Yaakov and that's another spelling of Yaakov when he had got the additional yod, the truth. Add them together, 370, which is 10 times 37, 10 times Yeshu. That is Mashiach ben Yosef suffering in exile with his, with his name erased. Okay, 47, these are the ordinals of Yaakov. 47 and 53, 53 is also the ordinal of Yeshua, comes to 100. Add them both up together, they come to 470. Okay, um, a tree of the field. Right, so a tree of the field. We've already gone through this concept, haven't we? Man is a tree of the field. Um, so our whole experience in our lives, trying to reveal the holy name Yodeh Vavi and trying to ascend, even though we're trapped in this physical reality, for our to, our soul to ascend and ascend and ascend, still whilst we're even trapped in this physical reality to the heights where we attain those levels where we ourselves can be like masters of the Shabbat, we are not subservient to these slave mentalities, we are like um, liberated and redeemed from them. So, but we've got to experience life. You know, we have got to experience, we're like a tree in the field of life. Right, so that's connected to that. But hopefully our experience as a tree in a, in a field of life should, instead of, we, we've got a choice, we either reveal Hasodeh, the holy field of the Shekhinah, which is connected to the Mashiach, master of the Shabbat, or we reveal Metatron, because like I've said before, Hasodeh can be Shaddai, it's the same gematria as Shaddai, which can be Metatron. What's our experience in our lives going to reveal the truth about um, Mashiach ben Yosef, or Yosef Chai, a revelation of the Mashiach or a revelation of Metatron? It's our choice. And also, this is the 474 is the regular of Da'ath, knowledge. Okay, so what knowledge have we been gaining whilst we've been in this life? For God had taken him, taken who? Taken Enoch, who was Metatron. <laughs> so we've got a link there as well, haven't we? 1,362. It's all linked. Who is it that we're going to reveal? Metatron or Yodhe Barfe, the Mashiach and Yodhe Barfe. Okay, we've got Leviathan coming up again. So the Mespagadol of Leviathan, if we add these two numbers together, 1,221, the God has taken him. So we know this is where I mean there's a link between Metatron, Enoch and Leviathan. This is um, unholy Da'ath, if you want. And Enoch walked with God. And it's just coming again and again, thick and fast, isn't it? 1,221, that's the regular and the ordinal of that. Okay. And then we've got that which Moshe did. Ashe or se Moshe. And that's exactly the same initials as in Od Milvador. There is nothing beside him. There's nothing beside your Tevafe. And Moshe suffering exile until we reach that place where we are able to say in Od Milvador and subdue all these exilic forces to the site you'll subdue them so that we are able to serve your day freely okay so 1221 again it's all related and then there's 123 which kits sets an end to darkness that's the ordinal of that if these men die as all men die korach's rebellion so this is a korach stands in opposition there's one opposite the other so you know Moshe in exile, suffering in the Erev Rav exile, in order to reveal the truth, in Od Milvador, there's always an opposition to that, <laughs> Korak's rebellion. And these teachings, these uh, uh, um, t t Dead Sea Scroll teachings, are a rebellion. They're a rebellion against the Mashiach of yod They're a rebellion because they enhance slave mentality. Okay, and bring separation between... Um, Israel and the nations and separation between the Moshiach and his bride and all kinds of things male and female Samuel okay 
Um, if you take the squared ordinal and the regular and the no ordinal, add them together, come to 1,221. The reason why Korach rebelled was because he could foresee his ge in his genealogy, Samuel. Samuel came from Korach, okay? And in the... Samuel was such a great prophet that um, in the Psalms, both Moshe and Aaron together w were given a status equal to Samuel on his own. Okay, so this is part of the teachings and Sage's teachings regarding the Psalms, which mentions Moshe and Aaron and the prophet Samuel who called in his name and stuff like that. Um, what we're going to say with that so Korach could foresee in, in himself was something greater than Moshe and Aaron together but what he couldn't see is what Moshe would become Moshe became Yeshua HaMashiach and there's nobody greater than him <laughs> ok so Moshe, Mashiach was transformed but Korach couldn't perceive what Moshe, Moshe would become so uh, a whole uh, you know the earth the, there was the mouth of the earth that swallowed Korach and in, um, oh, where is it now? Ethics of the Fathers, it's called um, a Pikavot. I think it's, it's in Pikavot chapter 6, I think it's even chapter verse 1. Um, it mentions about the things that were born on Erev Shabbat, um, just before the Shabbat of the sixth day, just before the Shabbat of the seventh day, on the sixth day, just before the Shabbat of the seventh day, right? And one of them, the thing, the first thing in the list is that I think the mouth of the earth that swallowed Korach was created. But if you do the gematria of the mouth of the earth, the gematria is Yeshua. So this is the whole concept is when you've got a rebellion, this is why Yeshua had to descend into exile to swallow all these rebels up, <laughs> you know, take them out from the bottom. But really that was Moshe himself. Moshe um, went into Erev Rav exile and eventually the soul of Mashiach was reincarnated. Well, the soul of Mashiach came back. The, the soul of Mashiach came back at a much higher level, the level of Mashiach ben Yosef. And obviously this is what ultimately swallows Korach and all his rebellion. And then from that place, once the mouth of the earth, which is codenamed for Mashiach ben Yosef, swallows up Korach, Korach says from that point, point Moshe is true and his Torah is true and he acknowledges the truth regarding the Mashiach so we've got to get rid of all these re rebellious um, rebellious teachers and teachings and that represent Korach and bring separation they really bring separation between um, male and female aspects of divinity because it says um, you know Korach took took um, the, you know or Kar Korach separated and that's how Korach is introduced in the Torah and the word comes to 124 and 124 is the name Yode Vave U Elohim Yode Vave He is our God right He is God and that is Yode Vave represents heaven Elo Elohim represents earth and who really represents the power of Keta, the the like the the power of the crown, are really symbolic of Mashiach, but specifically Mashiach ben Yosef, to unite those two opposites together as one. And this is the channel between heaven and earth. So Korach wanted to come against that, didn't he? He wanted to come against that connection between heaven and earth, which is ultimately the Mashiach. What did he say? Oh, we're all divine. We're all holy. Not just you, Moshe, but Moshe was the was the channel okay he's the channel between heaven and earth he's that that your have desired to be um to unite those two opposites together it's a mass it's more than a man it's a massive 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 um concept is the concept of mashiach but Reb karach was in rebellion against the will of your have and what he achieved through the concept of the mashiach Enoch, 123, there we go, opposite what Moshe did again. Uh, you know, we don't want Enoch, we want Mashiach. And with that, I will say Shalom. And please subscribe because without subscribing, you might miss the next teachings um, to the, uh, uh, along this theme. Okay, Shalom.